quick preface, this is a response to somebody who took issue with my statements against Muslims or some Muslims, um, an aspect of Muslim culture, something like this. And here in El Cajon, there was a woman named Shaima Alawadi. She was beaten to death with a tire iron. A note was left at the side saying, you're a terrorist, go back to your country. And all the garbage media jumped in the direction of, it must have been a person who hates Muslims because they put this terrorist note. Then you find out that it's probably your husband that beat her to death. And he beat her to death because she was going to divorce him. She was forced 17 years prior to marry him when she was 15 years old. Forced to marry him, beaten to death for trying to divorce him. And somewhere in the middle, she was likely forced to wear hijab, or at least if she had any notion of not wearing hijab, she feared violence. I made a video called Shaima Alawadi from Beyond the Grave denounces Islamic chauvinism. My point was all these people who jumped in the direction of saying we Muslims are treated badly for wearing the hijab find out that it's actually somebody getting beaten to death for not going along with Muslim ideology which is to not marry or not to divorce the husband even if you're forced into marriage. So I denounced all this Islamic chauvinism and all, and, uh, all the self-deception and I got a very angry few responses from somebody who actually was one of the people who gave me a bunch of information and insight about the Shaim al-Awadi case. This is a, a, a Muslim here in El Cajon and she came back around to me after I had uh, estranged us by speaking reality to her. She came back around this morning. We had a little bit of conversation. She said she hadn't seen any of my videos in a while. I recommended this other video and then she sends me this. Russ, I do not appreciate your statements in this video. Some people have told you that wearing the hijab is not written in the Quran. Who the hell are the people for you to make such a claim? Well, for one thing, it's not specifically said hijab. It talks about covering yourself. It doesn't say you have to wear a burqa. It doesn't talk about niqab. It doesn't talk about any of those things specifically. Later on, I'll mention the obvious, which is that religion is just born of culture. If you were born in Kansas, you wouldn't have been a Muslim. You would have been whatever everyone around you, whatever the most aggressive males say is the invisible friend. That's what you would believe. So whether the Quran says you have to wear the hijab or not, it doesn't explicitly say you have to wear a headscarf. And it also does, doesn't say you can force a woman into marriage when she's 15 and beat her to death for divorce. Nevertheless, that happened. I wasn't worried too much about the Quran, but I just wanted to address that point. And don't sit there, I was standing, don't sit there and claim that women don't choose to wear the hijab. It's a choice. And so, of course, the point is that regardless of how many women choose to wear the hijab, some women get beaten to death or threatened with death for not wearing the hijab. Uh, we'll get into more of this in a second. If you knew better, you would do better. See, we'll get more into this, but you are a pampered, protected, pretty Muslim girl much like Fatima, and you probably sound, if you were to speak this, the same way she sounded, that self-righteous, just talking right out of your face because people have to listen to you, and you're protected and pampered. So when you say it's a choice, I don't doubt that some people choose it. However, here's some know your enemy. I was the editor-in-chief of the school's newspaper at Grossmont College. A lot of the things that I dealt with, people hadn't dealt with in the longest time. They were ignoring things like... Uh, the club for people with disabilities was having some issues in getting chartered. So a bunch of other stuff, but the point I want to get to is the Muslim Student Association had a lot of issues, and Muslim students in general had a lot of issues with problems on the campus. One example is they were using this area in a hallway to pray, and people didn't like it, and so they made up some, the, the people who didn't like it made up some excuse about, oh, you're blocking a fire lane, so we can't, that, that would be, if in the event of an emergency, that would be dangerous and so they came to me some of them and and eventually we got the point to the administrators that that's a lie based on just trying to keep these people from praying because obviously if there's a fire they're not just going to sit there being in everyone's way in the fire lane uh, in the in the area to towards the emergency exit oh no we have to pray and the fire is going and everything no so that's my context for muslims just at grossman college but speaking more about Grossmont College, after things like that, a lot of people came to me, a lot of Muslims came to me with different issues. 
especially issues they couldn't bring up to each other because of various fears of being shamed and whatnot. Just a couple of those examples are girls who, one, one example is a girl got some text messages where somebody got her phone number and was sending her dick pictures. And I said, well, you should let your parents know and then, you know, change your number and this and that. Oh, I can't. If my parents or anyone in my fam or in my um, community found out, some people might blame me and try to kill me. And that's one example of the spirit of what a lot of girls, not, I mean, not tons and tons, but several girls came to me with those kinds of issues. Such and such happened to me. I was, I was disrespected or, or harmed in this way. I can't tell anybody because they'll blame me and somebody will want to hurt me. So you can do this chauvinistic biased devotion to Muslims and say everybody chooses the hijab or enough people choose the hijab so we'll just ignore the people who are forced into marriage, forced into staying with their husband or being killed, forced into the hijab. Marriage is a choice not for everyone. Hijab is a choice not for everyone. So you're gonna drown in the waters of thinking that just talking right out of your face of the first thing that comes up, hey, I am pretty and protected and pampered, therefore your ideas aren't right. Well, you know what? There are plenty of other Muslims. You're not the only person. I get to speak for Muslims because I'm a Muslim. I get to speak for Muslim women because I'm a Muslim woman. No. Furthermore, yes, there are some that force, but realistically speaking, we're in the 21st century. Well, plenty of Muslims aren't. Muslims educate, educate their children, and we choose our path. Sure, the pampered, protected, rich kid, Americanized Muslim girl chooses her path. Well, the same cannot be said of Shaima Alawadi, for example. And remember, this video was about her, so you can take what I said about Shaima Alawadi, a very specific person who was forced into marriage. It's reasonable to assume she was forced into other aspects of Muslim culture, for example, hijab, and then she was beaten to death for wanting a divorce. I was talking about her. You want to make it about you? I didn't get forced into marriage. I wasn't forced to wear this job. I didn't say every Muslim is forced to wear the job. Again, if you knew your enemy, you'd know that I know that the hijab started according to Muslim history because some people came to talk to the Prophet Muhammad and they mistook his wives for slaves. And of course, the, the hijab is all about status symbol and you couldn't afford it if you were a poor person. So it's a status symbol. It is for rich bitches. So no, I don't think people are oppressed into wearing the hijab necessarily. Some of them are rich bitches who want to. Uh, the West has a very similar thing. Girls used to be forced to wear high heels or forced to bind their feet. Nobody was forced nearly as much as the people wanted to bind their feet. And still in China, oh actually it's illegal now, but wearing the high heels, it's a status symbol. It still deforms your feet. Wearing the hijab, absolutely, it's a status symbol. It's saying, I'm going to cover up because you're not even fit to certainly not touch me, but not even look at me. I'm a treasure. Yeah, what girl doesn't want that? Some girls don't want that. But you know what? Some girls get beaten to death for not playing along well enough. But yeah, it's something about you. you see. Uh, get your facts straight. And then you say, and this is going to get, this is why I didn't, you said, well, this is why I'm making this message for the sake of other people because this will do very little for you because it's about to get, as they say, the shit's about to get real. And no, honey, there's a difference between culture and religion because in the video I said that your religion is dictated by your culture. You know, again, if you're in Kansas, you were born in Kansas in the 1950s, hey, what do you know? I, I don't believe in, in Allah. I just, I've never heard of the person. Religion and culture, same thing. No, religion and culture are, are different. There's a difference. I suggest you learn the difference or the definition of both. And then I say BRB, because I was going to make this video. And then you say, yeah, I bet. Probably sounding like Fatima in your head. That's fine. Go do your research. Take all the time you need, but don't come back unless you have a rational response instead of these vulgar allegations. And to think I admired your lectures in the past. I don't know what happened to you. And then I said, I'm recording a response now. And you said, recording? I don't need a video. Just talk to me like a normal person. Talk to, like I'm a normal person or like you're a normal person? We'll get to it, but let's start at the top. Go do your research, take the time you need, don't come back unless you have a reasonable response and not vulgar. Actually, you have to go further back up. You say, no, honey, there's a difference. And uh, earlier you said something likewise condescending, but we'll stick with the no, honey. Now, I want to remind you, and for those listening on, I'm going to uh, clarify something. 
this person contacted me. You contacted me for the context of Shaima al Awadi. In the context of me arguing back and forth with you about other videos you saw of mine, I made the point, with ever having even seen how fine you are, that by the way you talk, you're probably some hot Arab chick who is used to having people let, uh, having people let you say whatever and just encouraging you. You could say this, blah, blah. oh good. You could say the opposite. Oh, good. You could say this. Oh, good. You could say it doesn't matter. Everything you're encouraged to do. But like I alluded to back when I told you I don't care that you're hot and that my arguments will never address the fact you're hot, that was just scratching the surface. So one thing people sometimes say is it's powerful when what you say is just the tip of the iceberg of what you know. Let me tell you what I know. I've been paid really good money to fuck women that are hotter than you will ever be. And anyone who knows other videos I've made about this point, I don't say that to brag or to demean you even. People who've been through what I've been through as far as the sex industry and everything, it's not a status symbol to us. We don't, wow, I, I fucked harder chicks than her. My point is, I don't care that you're hot. My point is the fact that you're accustomed to hearing what you want to hear and not hearing what you don't want to hear doesn't compute to me because I don't look at you as a hot chick. I look at you as somebody who's almost as hot as some of the better looking girls that I've fucked who've paid me. Again, nothing necessarily to be proud of, but I'm just like, imagine me tolerating your nonsense because as I mentioned before, you're in the prime of your life. And so you think you can just say or do whatever you want. I recommend looking up Socrates or well, Plato's dialogue Mino, where the character Socrates says to Mino, you clearly are still young and have many lovers because you're tyrannical and you speak in imperatives, thinking you can just say or do whatever you want, because plenty of people let you think that you can. So again, I, I don't care in this condescending, oh honey, nah, you know I'm not your honey, but you know, you can pat me on the head because you surround yourself with weak-minded, coward-ass, sexually retarded guys who let you pat them on the head. So that was the context I wanted to mention for this condescension and this you assuming that I mean, you really do viscerally by now. You're just your gut feeling by now from everything you've learned by this culture and your own culture, the United States culture and, and Middle Eastern culture, is I necessarily give a fuck that you're hot. And I don't. And uh, similarly, you say... Uh, recording, I don't need a video, just talk to me like a normal person. For one thing, I'm not a normal person. I spend my time studying and then taking the time to tell people what they don't necessarily want to hear, but what I think they need to hear. And the reason I record it is because it would be wasted on people like you. Plenty of people would come to me and say, why are you telling her that she's not going to listen or she's going to just say something crazy? She's just going to hate you for this, that. Right. But in my infinite humility, I give you the benefit of the doubt that you actually want to hear things that, from time to time that you don't necessarily want to hear, but you need to hear. I give you that benefit of the doubt. Likewise, I tell the people who would say, oh, don't bother with them. I say, well, you know what? It's for other people who are listening on. Like if I'm talking to you, if I was in person and I had to say this in person, I wouldn't be talking to you because I would be talking at you, but you don't pay attention. You're a hot chick. It'll, you know, five other guys will tell you what you want to hear five minutes later. So I'm talking to the people with you. That's my audience. So no, I'm not going to talk to you like a normal person. I'm not a normal person. You're not a normal person. I am a studious philosopher guy. You are a hot chick who doesn't like to be told anything except exactly what you want to hear. So no, I will not tell you these things. I will make a video out of it and it will endure longer than fleeting words. And then the last thing you said, and this, is, this will tie it up. You said, and to think I admired your lectures in the past. I don't know what happened to you. So the idea is something happened to me. Something couldn't have happened to you. Regardless, that is so hot chick mentality. It's no reflection on me that you admired my lectures. My lectures are good. So good for you that you admired them. The hot chick mentality is you're doing me a favor by admiring my lectures. Dude, hey, everybody, this hot chick thinks I'm smart. I don't give a fuck, bro. No. I don't care if you admire them or not. They're good ideas. If they're not good ideas, somebody's going to have to explain a really a hell of a good reason why not. And I go, wow, that's true. Okay, my idea's not good. We'll go with that. And that becomes my idea. 
That's why I sound like I sound. It's not from going, well, I just don't like Muslims. That's that. They're just, just that. No, not from any kind of cartoon character thing you might want to put on me. Well, you just clearly have a problem. You need to do your research, honey. No, I have good ideas. If people come with better ideas, well, that's my idea now. So um, the idea that I'm going to give a damn or that, oh, wow, you used to admire my lectures. Again, this is you talking in your head. This is certainly the last I'll save it. This is you, a hot chick, talking in your head about me to me. In theater, we call it a soliloquy. Soliloquy is when there's one actor, several people are around, but then the lights cut out on them, and it goes just to the one person, and they just talk about what's going on, and everybody else is frozen, and they're in the dark. Hot chicks have been socialized to be stupid, reckless, and useless enough to think they can have soliloquies right in front of people, talking about them right in front of them. And to think, freeze and, and have the lights on, and to think, I used to admire your lectures. No, 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 I'm not talking to you. I'm, I'm in the midst of myself. You think I find that interesting? Like I said, probably I would if I am also a sexually retarded person with no self-respect who says she's hot, so I better just tell her what she wants to hear, not tell her what she doesn't want to hear, and encourage her no matter what she says. I recommend two things. Know your enemy and go the fuck back to sleep, honey. All right, leave it to me to make an epic and exit and then go like, oh, hold, hold, hold on, I, f I forgot something. Okay, remember you to whom this message is and for those listening on, you removed me from Facebook after adding me on Facebook, finding me all that kind of stuff. I didn't find seek you out. I didn't say, hey, there's a hot chick. I'm going to go and chase it. You said, well, this person's interesting and I don't care if you disagree. I'm still interesting. The reason you removed me from Facebook before adding me back and you just forgot and just added me back later is at some point I came across your profile and it's a whole bunch of tedious self-aggrandizement by you. Hey, look at this, look at this, and all these people telling you how beautiful you are. It's just boring to me. You know, like I said, if I wanted that, I'd go back to the sex industry where guys and girls get all kinds of compliments that are fleeting. But I came across your profile, I saw that, and sent you a message, and with my tongue in my cheek, as they say, meaning I'm telling you sort of a joke, but I'm being straight-faced about it, I said, hi, your name. Wow, you're looking amazing. It reminded me of, I said that, and then I sent you this picture. When a beautiful pampered woman sees her aging mother, she knows capricious lust, fleetingly evoked, cannot bring her enduring happiness. So the point was, I was sending you a message saying, hey, you know how people tell you what you want to hear all the time because you're hot and you're like, 18, 19, 20 years old, you're going to be old at some point. And if you're just a loudmouth, self-righteous, ignorant, hot chick, one day you're going to be a loudmouth, self-righteous, ignorant, old chick. And then you're really going to be a mess. So I'm not going to try to make another epic exit because I ruined the last one in case I have to come back again. I don't want it. Anyhow, uh, know your enemy, go back to sleep, and... Uh, Oh, here's one. Here's I'll, I'll end it on this, and it'll be epic. You know what? You can shoot the messenger, but the message is bulletproof. <sighs> sure as hell. Thought of something else. Only because when I ended on that epic note, and it was totally I was done, somebody who's listening in asked something, and it reminded me that they're there. And they're Baha'i. Remember I said I was the editor-in-chief of Grossmont's newspaper, student newspaper? One of the things that also happened, and this was when I had a whole lot of acquaintances that are Muslim, so I had the credibility to do something like this. There was a Muslim or Islam Awareness Day out in the quad at Grossmont, and they had some speakers, and the Islam people think is this, but really we do this, and da da da, -da and it's this guy's opinion, and... Afterwards, when he finished with the whole, we are a religion of peace, and etc., etc., I went and interviewed him for the school's newspaper. You can actually find that interview. I'll link it in the description. 
I asked him, what about the treatment of people in Iran? His response was, the retreatment by Muslims, his response was, oh, well, they're Shia. Who, who knows why they do what they do? And all this, not one to let him off the hook that easy because he was amidst a whole lot of people trying to look diplomatic. So I said, oh, let me change. Let me rephrase this. What about Baha'i in Iran? And of course, he could just go, oh, you know, that's Shia problem. Right away, the whole facade of, well, I'm the religion of peace and I'm the nice guy. Oh, I would never eat from the same bread as them. They have a prophet that came after the prophet, peace be upon him, and all this insanity. Yes, God is made up. And that kind of insanity only comes from people saying, hey, you doubt my imaginary friend? You doubt when my imaginary friend said there shall be no prophets after Muhammad? P-B-U-H. You ever noticed how lazy those Muslims who write P-B-U-H, like, we have to put peace be upon him, but we don't want to have to type out peace be upon him. P-B-U-H. So after Muhammad came a prophet for Baha'i, and so Muslims aren't for that. Muslims aren't for anybody who puts a prophet after Muhammad. Of course, people of the book, Jews, their prophets all came before Muhammad, so they're okay. Jesus, the prophet of Christianity, or God, according to Christians, he came before Muhammad. But anybody who has a prophet after Muhammad, they're fair game to hate and to not eat the bread after. So, uh, spare me, or as the kids say these days, miss me with that bullshit about Muslims are this way, we are nice, this and that. I know plenty of Muslims that are nice and fantastic people. But with rare exceptions, all you have to do is mention something like Baha'i. And all of a sudden, all that diplomacy goes out the window and they would not eat of the bread of the person and all this kind of nonsense. So speak for yourself, not necessarily for all Muslims. And remember the intolerance that underpins a lot of what you were meticulously taught to believe. Thankfully, I've clearly seen how transitory flattery must be. It can never last. Thankfully, I clearly see how transitory flattery must be. It can never last. So I will not tell a lie To keep a friend who in the end Would fall 